Yeah, because it isn't it isn't much. Okay, so we're recording away here, and we will start our note. And again, like I said, our note here is very quickly on making acids and bases. <clears throat> so remember, yesterday we talked about acid-base theories. According to Arrhenius, an acid is a chemical that has an H on the front, and when you dissolve it in water, it falls off. Right? We call that ionization. That's like the, the, the couple that always holds hands, and when they have a breakup, it isn't nice. You've got to completely break that bond, and you've got to ionize it. Um, a base, remember, is something that when you put it in water, it dissociates to form hydroxides, or OH-, and dissociation isn't quite as exciting because they're already existing as ions. They're just separating away. So what we want to talk about today is how then are acids and bases originally made. So making acids, acids result when the oxides of nonmetals are dissolved in water. And this would have been the original way in which, um, you know, not even chemists, but the original way in which, you know, just early humans would have encountered acids, right? They would, they would have burnt some wood in a, you know, in, a, in a fire in order to cook whatever. They would have had, a, had ashes that were left. If there was any sulfur that was in that wood for whatever you know, reason in which the wood was formed, then there would be sulfur oxides. And if those sulfur oxides then could have been dissolved in water, then the resulting water that they had would taste different, would taste sour, right, or, or would have different properties. So this would have been the original way in which the acids and the solutions would have been kind of discovered in the campfire. Well, they wouldn't be campfires. They'd be fires of, to stay alive, right, in their caves or who knows. However, I'm not an anthropologist. I have no idea how that works. But that's the way they would have originally been made. So one of the elements that we're going to do, actually, I'm going to demonstrate sulfur. I'm going to do this one as a demonstration. And that's because when you burn sulfur, you get sulfur trioxide gas, and it stinks. It's like an incredibly you know, pungent odor. It burns your eyes. So if everyone were to do the sulfur burning in the classroom, the whole room would be just, you know, it would just be full of sulfur or trioxide gas, and it would, it would be really sticky. So I'm going to do this one as a demonstration, all right? But you're going to burn some other non-metals. You're going to burn some carbon, right, in the form of charcoal, and you're going to then have that oxide dissolve in water. You're going to burn um, some iron. Now, that's a metal, right? And then you're also going to burn some magnesium in uh, some pure oxygen, and that's the one that's a little dangerous that you've got to watch for, okay? So yeah, by the looks of it online, the the Google version doesn't like the arrows. What are they putting there? A box and what's in it? Just a symbol of some sort? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Question. Yeah. Anyway, so it, it must not like the font for the arrow. Okay, have we got that one? All right. Making bases. When you take a metal and you burn it, and can you burn metals? Yes, you can. We're going we're to burn magnesium. We've done that once already. We're going to do it again. And we're going to try to burn some iron. You might think, burn iron? You can't, like, burn steel. But you can if you get it hot enough. We're going to be using steel wool. And, and then, like I said, we're going to be putting it in pure oxygen. So, you know, you're, you're accustomed to what a fire does in regular air, that's only about 21% oxygen. When we put these elements that are burning into pure oxygen, the reaction is going to be greatly accelerated. It's going to happen very quickly. The reason we're going to put it in pure oxygen in a gas jar is so that we can catch the oxides, so we can catch the magnesium oxide, and we can catch the carbon dioxide, so we can catch it and we can then do a reaction. Okay. All right, so if you have a metal and you burn it, you take the oxide and dissolve it in water, it gives you a base. And if you have a non-metal and you burn it, 
and you dissolve it in water, you end up with an acid. It's that straightforward. Okay? I don't know if I have another slide. I got one more. Um, we are not doing that. We're not going to do the acid rain assignment because I'm not that concerned right now about that stuff. All right, so we're not going to do that, and I'm going to just shut this down at this point. I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to stop the record. Say.